Hey guys, my name is Bando, it's just Rex Bando, and I'm going to take a break from painting random miniatures that uh, are in my backlog to do a quick video on um, building some miniatures that have been in my backlog for quite some time. Uh, I have a pair of Lehman Russ tanks that have been uh, sat in my pile of shame probably for close to five years. And I got them in a trade. I traded a, a work colleague, a black Vietnam era 1911 holster for an like an IKEA box, one of those big sort of like storage box, just filled with miniatures. And inside were three Lehman Russ battle tanks. Two of them in the boxes, and one of them was already built. Now the one that was built. I actually converted into a laser destroyer for a different project, but uh, uh, the the other ones, the ones that are in the boxes, this one and a demolisher, have just been sat in their boxes and I've tried selling them, I've tried trading them, and no one wanted them, so eventually I was like, okay, with the, with the new militia rules, I'm just going to go ahead and actually make them. Now it's been a hot minute since I've made a Lehman Russ, and... Looking at these sprues, this is a radically different kit to the Lehman Russ I built when I had a Cadian army. Um, fun fact about my first Cadian army, they wore black and green, and they had that, that sort of jagged Cadian camo pattern on their armour. And their fluff was that they came from a forest world, and they were really good at stealth. Original, right? I'd never read... The Gaunt's Ghosts books. I'd never even heard of the Gaunt's Ghost books at that point. I was still at boarding school. So, yeah. Uh, I have a habit of doing that as well, which is really annoying. Um, of just coming up with fluff that's like ridiculously close to existing stuff that I've never heard of before. Which is kind of annoying. But, looking at these, um, it's going to be nice and simple. The big difference here between uh, the ones I'm used to... Um, well, first of all, the track colour is different, because the last time I built one of these, it came with black tracks. Um, and it doesn't seem to have the road wheels. That's right. Uh, all of these little dots where it connects uh, used to... You used to put wheels along there. In fact, you had about six or seven of them, if I remember correctly. Um, you actually put the wheels on, and the track sat on top of the wheels. Um, other than that, it's more or less the same kit. Just a slightly recut new weapons for the turret, that sort of thing. Now these will both be uh, assembled as vanquishers, and for that I'm using these guns. Pardon me. Which are third party bits, which have come from a website called beyondthetabletop.com. Uh, beyondthetabletop.com does some uh, bits for tanks, they do bits for infantry. It's not a huge shop. Um, but it has some good quality stuff. These are not beginner pieces, however. Um, you can see on the top gun there is some casting issues. And... Yeah, the, these were not horrendous. And at £10 each for the gun and the sponsored... Sorry, not sponsored... Uh, coaxial weapons. Um, I was more than happy with the quality. None of the casting issues um, were hard to defeat, they weren't hard to repair, and they are pretty standard for working with um, garage kits, is often what they're called. You know, they're small batch, sort of smaller business, semi-professional casted kits. You know, this is not some huge international company making these. However, I would not say that these kits are um, beginner kits. And for it, you need the gun. And then just to the left, you'll see there's that sort of block of resin. That is the turret conversion kit. You will also need one of those. And it requires a little bit of cutting. And by a little bit of cutting, I mean a lot of cutting. Cutting, filing, fitting, measuring, fitting, more filing, until you're happy that it fits correctly. 
they do not fit the demolisher turret in the same way they fit the standard turret. I will go over this more later in the video. So starting off, remove from the sprues all the bits I was going to use, which is the four hull panels, and I just glued them together, making sure they were nice and tight. Some people like to use elastic bands, I just make sure they're in straight, and then just set them side flat somewhere and they're good to go. Then it's on to the pretty tedious, this is one of my least favourite parts of making tanks, is, is fitting the tracks. Um, luckily, they pretty much can only go on one way, which is good. Each part is kind of uh, unique in length, so you can't mess it up. Uh, and they do go together quite easily. Um, I would wait, I did, I, I spoke to this on, on Discord to some people, I'd really like to get some 3D printed parts to enhance the suspension and the road wheels to lift this track off the body slightly. Only say half an inch, maybe a third of an inch. So it actually looked like it could function. I think those could look really cool. So once I've done that, um, you know, I made sure I've cleaned up all of the, um, the gates, you know, mold lines, gate points, that sort of thing. Um, that was that was it for the for the uh, the tracks. They're really simple to put together now. Um, the difference between that and the old version with the wheels, this just yeah, it's it's night and day. So much easier to do. Um, the body comes off, it's in two parts, and then it's, you know, uh, one of the little tricks with the, with the body. What I like to do is, rather than just gluing the two halves together like the instructions say, glue the two halves together and then straight away slam it into the, uh, into the tracks. Get that together, and, um, and that way, you know, it's on straight, you know it's fitting correctly, it lets you pinch it together and make sure everything is actually in the right place. Um, after that, it's pretty simple, um, just pulling out the details, things like these um, exhaust pipes. Now the back end of the Lehman Russ is pretty easy on you, it lets you choose where you want things to go, and one of the things I wanted to change was this hatch. Now this hatch is for the little box, the toolbox, or the engine access box, whatever you want to call it. It has a um, an Imperium, like Imperial logo on it. It's a, a skull in some laurels, and I just wanted to get rid of it because I didn't feel like it fit the fluff. Because the fluff for these guys is that they're not rich, they're not experienced, they're a former agri-world who has militarised and gone on the warpath. So I, all I did is I trimmed it down with my knife as much as I could, being very careful not to damage the handle or the, um, the details for the hinges, or take any gouges out the edges either. And then using the emery boards, the green emery boards that I've spoke about in several videos, I just filed it down using the really coarse one and working my way up through the grit until I got to the one where I could polish it back nice and flat. So very happy with that. And then I decided that what I was going to do was instead of having it going on at 90 degrees or horizontal, I wanted it vertical. And I put the uh, exhaust pipes on either side rather than both being on one side or the other and I think this is just a little bit different to what you would normally see and you know I, I repeated it on the second tank as well after that it was very simple just pop the last cannon on the uh, on the front and uh, with militia Lehman Russes you don't have to worry about the sponsons they can't take sponson weapons so you get to keep that nice and clear. Now we get on to the uh, the fun part. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it was fun. So you basically have to gut the turret. And Beyond the Tabletop does have an instruction sort of manual for this on their website. But it's um, 
it's not the best, I'll be honest. Um, so, I didn't get as many pictures as I would have liked. Um, should have taken some more, but as you can see, this is the turret as is. Normally the gun sits in that little nook on the right, and you can pivot it up and down, up and down, up and down. You need to remove basically all of the material until you get to the outer edge of this V shape, this 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 ridge at the top. So a good <clears throat> I don't know quarter of a centimeter's worth of material needs to come out. The entirety of this middle section with the curve in the middle that needs to go, and then you need to just file it out. Um, so yeah, it, <clears throat> it's pretty aggressive. The reason you do this is because you have to fit um, this piece, which is the um, turret conversion kit. And there's two parts to this. It's this main body part and then a little flap that sits on the front of it, um, which can be a little fiddly. There are a little bit of um, um, flash and gates and stuff on it. Um, but it wasn't too bad. Now, it's slightly different for the demolisher turret. Um, I will, again, I'm going to go over that in a second. Um, there we go, that's the picture I'm after, I think. Yep. That's the one. And you can see the sort of level of damage that you have to do to these turrets. Um, which is just... a bit nuts for a conversion kit. So... So you can see here, this is the demolisher turret, and you can see it's a slightly different shape. So you need to remove more. Um, and then you have to remove these two tabs on the inside. I can't tell you exactly how to do it. It's one of those things where you just have to keep going at it and going at it. Until you know that you've got it fit to sort of how you like it. That being said, once it is in place, this is what it looks like. So this is the first tank, this is the um, the regular turret, and you can see how it fits in nicely and how that uh, second part of the conversion kit sits just above the gun. And once that's in place you can just glue the coaxial stubber in place as well. There's a couple more pictures of this. Um, it's um, it's a good kit. I like it. The, the quality is nice. I like the design of the gun. Um, it's a bit more realistic. How silly that sounds, you know. It's a game about tanks in the 41st millennium and all that. Um, but I, I, I prefer it because it's a nice, longer, thinner barrel. Um, it looks like it's that... You know, the Vanquisher is supposed to be firing a much smaller, higher velocity um, projectile. And this, to me, looks like it. I think the, the, the actual Vanquisher gun that comes with the plastic kit just doesn't look great. You know, I like the old Forge World ones, the uh, the Mars and the Riser pattern ones. They looked pretty good as well. But getting over that, uh, you can see on the turret as well, what I've added is two sets of smoke launchers. One from the Lehman Rust kit, one from the Heresy kit. A Hunter Killer missile, which has come from the Heresy tank kit. The uh, Commander's Hatch is one of the ones from the Heresy tank set as well. And then a searchlight, which has come from the rust kit. I've also used parts of the sponsons to make a style of extra armor for the turret, to widen the turret out a bit. They look a bit like um, shirts. And, and I just wanted to get the turret a bit bigger. I don't think the, the Lehman Rust turret looks that great. I mean, proportional-wise, the, the, the Lehman Russ is all over the place. Um, 
it's a very weird looking tank. But I made sure they were straight and in my opinion they look fine. And uh, spoiler alert, that is the only opinion that I really care about. Now on to the demolisher um, turret. You can see here from this front on shot it is a slightly different shape which means that the gun is sat forward so you can see these circular bits on the sides. Um, the tank got all of the same um, modifications and upgrade as the other one. You can also see here at the back that the ammo hoppers and equipment bins, whatever you want to call them, are slightly raised. I actually prefer this style of um, turret. I think it looks a bit nicer, <clears throat> but that's just me. Um, so what I've got is I've got this turret, well the gun, is sat slightly forward. So what did I do? Well, I hid it, and I did that by using uh, an age-old trick that we use making tanks, which is I wrapped it in camo netting or tarpaulin or something. And in this case, it's a piece of paper, just kitchen roll, soaked in PVA glue and water. And then you leave it to dry, and it basically will come rock hard. And it's a, you know, it's a gun cover. It's it's a dust cover. It's camo netting. You can do this with toilet paper as long as it's not too heavily embossed. You know, the really cheap toilet paper that's like super thin, that's the best one to use. But you can also use um, gauze, bandages. Um, bandages make fantastic uh, camo netting. You clip a bit off, you know, sort of a couple of inch square and then slightly pull it apart so that the, uh, the fibres pull apart. Soak it in PVA glue, put it over where you want it to go, trim off any extra long strands that are sticking out on their own, and leave it to dry and it'll go rock solid. So, the differences between the two kits. Um, the Demolisher has an ever so slightly different turret and ever so slightly different details at the back. Um, they are almost identical. Um, and on the tabletop, I don't think anyone's going to really notice that it's a different turret, or care that it's a different turret. Uh, it just certainly doesn't affect gameplay in any way, shape, or form. And, yeah. Um, so that is that is uh, my review, my evening. Um, this is what I've done to start my Militia and Cults army, is uh, two angry-looking Lehman Russes. So, let me know what you think of these guys. Um... I'm very happy with what I've done with them. Um, however, you know, if you don't like them or if you've got any comments or criticism, uh, please let them know. Please go and check out Beyond the Tabletop. Um, they've got some, you know, nice little bits on there. Things like environmental filters. So if you're a, a you know, Krieg player, they've got some really great drop-in bits for uh, making your chimeras look a bit more interesting. And uh, that's about it for this. Um, on the topic of Conversion World, which was uh, a video I did a week or two back, um, two weeks ago, uh, the guys over at Conversion World did post on, on Instagram. They have had a massive, massive influx of orders. Um, they have also decided that after several people mentioning how bad Shapeway is, uh, that they <laughs> they are looking at alternatives for who and what they're going to do to provide their equipment um, or you know their their items once they've decided to close um, so again you have a little bit of time left go and you know go over to conversionworld.de um, and go and give you know Christian some of your money um, he is you know a great guy and I still haven't got my stuff, but apparently it does take a while for the shipping to the UK. Um, 9 to 12 days, I think he said. And it was only posted on Thursday, so I've got a while. I don't mind. Um, again, he's been just massively overrun with the number of um, orders you people have put through, which is brilliant. Keep doing it. Go and, go and find these small suppliers, you know, these small manufacturers, Beyond the Tabletop, Conversion World, and you know, all of those guys. And... You know, really, really go and share the, share the love. You don't have to sit there and just just 
you know, used Games Workshop kits. I used to think like that all the time. I used to, I used to despise third-party kits because they never had the right look for me. And in the last couple of years, so many of them have come out that have got the right aesthetic feel for me. And now I'm more than happy to go off and buy bits from them. So yeah, uh, again, so these are the Eliminator Cannon with Coaxial Weapons and the tar uh, Turret Conversion Kit from Beyond the Tabletop. Uh, it's £16 for the two together. There is a slightly cheaper gun, which is just the Eliminator Cannon, which doesn't have the side-mounted um, stubber. That's £8 if you want to get one. You know, money's a bit tight, which it is for everyone. Um, but an ex a £16 upgrade for these tanks, oh man, absolutely perfect. It, I will never build a Vanquisher without, you know, with a different weapon on it. Also, if you don't like the blank barrel look, he does sell a set of muzzle brakes, and they look really cool too. Right. Okay, guys. <clears throat> My name is Bando, this is Brexit Bando, and for the last 21 minutes, I apologise for taking up your time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.